The one thing that sets Christianity apart from the rest of the belief systems in the world is a distinctive plan of salvation that guarantees absolute eternal security through the penal substitutionary atonement of Jesus' death at Calvary. Because of what Jesus did for us on Calvary, we owed a debt we couldn't pay. So he came and paid a debt he didn't know. While we were yet sinners, Romans chapter 5 says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And because he died for us, Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There is no condemnation for them who are in Christ Jesus. He secured my salvation at the cross. We are secure by the labor of Christ. Secure by the labor of Christ. Look with me again at verses 31 through verse 33. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. We are secure by the labor of Christ. We have eternal security. Once you are saved, you can never be lost because we are secure by the labor of Christ. We have a high priest who is touched by our infirmities. He went to the cross and died for us to make an investment in us and his intentions for us come from the word in Jeremiah. I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you plans to give you a future and to give you a hope. I, I brought you out to bring you in. God declares to us even today, I hurt you so I could heal you. I broke you so I could bless you. And we are here today because of God's divine intention. He that spared not his own son, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. He has an investment in us and an in, and, and intention for us. And then he has an insistence concerning us. Look at verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who can come and bring up charges against me by the God who has already exonerated me. I can't be tried again for the same offense because Jesus erased it, eradicated it on Calvary and not even the devil himself can bring up any charges because God has justified me. Who can bring any accusation against God's elect? It is God who justifies. We are secure by the labor of Christ. And then we are secure in verse 34 by the life of Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. The price he paid on the cross gives us everything we need to live the Christ-centered, spirit-filled life. And then the power he displayed at the tomb 
God raised him from the dead. Because if Jesus had just died, we would still be in our sins. But Sunday morning, God raised him from the dead. And the same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead is the power that you and I have this morning. Resurrection power. Power to resurrect dreams. Power to resurrect dead ambition. Power to resurrect stifled and cremated hopes. Power to rise from the ashes of the mistakes of the past. God has given us not a spirit of fear, but of power. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for your sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep headed for the slaughter nay in all these things hallelujah we are more than conquer we are super conquerors we are super overcomers we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for i am persuaded i'm convinced beyond anybody trying to change my mind that neither death nor life angels principalities powers things present nor things to come height nor depth nor any other creature nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. Listen, brothers and sisters, neither sin, Satan, or situation can take me away from my eternal security. Even when I sin, I'm still eternally secure. Even when Satan accuses me and he's right, I'm eternally secure. Any situation that comes in my life, it might toss me, but it will not uproot me. It might blow me from side to side, but it'll never, even if I let go his hand, he won't let go of my hand. Now, listen, the love of God is enduring. The love of God is enabling. The love of God is everlasting. 